friends and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today's video, pretty self-explanatory, but I want to give you guys some tips on what you can do to not break your diet or new healthy eating habits when you go on vacation. And just to make it clear, no, I don't, I'm not necessarily talking about if you're going away for a weekend and you're going to be eating out a lot. Uh, this is more specifically towards maybe a camping trip or me, for example, I'm going to be applying a lot of these steps to, um, or for when I go to lightning in a bottle at the end of the month, at the end of the month, which is, um, a big music camping festival out in the desert for five days. And lately I've been really trying to get my health in check and to make sure that I'm doing everything that I can to have the body that I want. And my ultimate goal is to have more lean muscle and lower the amount of body fat that I have and upper the amount of muscle that I have. Okay, anyways, so just real quick before we get started, I wanted to let you guys know that in no way am I saying you have to do any of these tips um, or apply any of them for that matter. I think that if you're going on vacation, then you very much deserve to let yourself let loose and uh, even splurge a little bit, it's not going to hurt you that much in the long run as long as you get back on track to whatever your goals may be um, when you're not on vacation. So in no way am I saying that you have to do these things, but I've definitely been in the position where I wanted to or where I've been really nervous about an upcoming event because I know that I wanted to stay on my diet or I wanted to keep eating clean and I was always worried that maybe it would I would gain a few pounds or whatever and keep in mind I don't weigh myself or anything like that I do look at myself in the mirror pretty often like almost every morning which I kind of want to keep to a minimum but um, I do notice that when I eat mostly raw whole plant-based foods yes I am vegan but not a very strict one sometimes I eat honey or something like that or I'll accidentally have something um, that has some kind of milk in it, but anyways, um, um, I notice that when I eat whole plant-based foods, I feel the best, and then sometimes when I go out and drink with friends and I splurge on like a whole bag of potato chips, I definitely feel it the next day, so if you are in this boat and you don't want to wake up feeling bloated the next day, or you just want to lean out or feel the best that you can and not break your diet while you are going to an event or camping or whatever you're doing, then stay tuned because I have a couple tips that might help you. So the first tip that I have, and this is something that um, I'm going to be applying to myself, and it's if you're going to be making a lot of mixed drinks, which you may or may not, then try using a vitamin zero water or a diet soda. No, diet soda is not the best thing you can put in your body, neither is a vitamin zero water. However, um, there are possible options if you're trying to spare a couple calories, maybe for a later meal in the day, like you're going to be grilling burgers or you're going to have buns or splurging a little bit more on alcohol. If you want to save yourself a little bit more calories and carbs, maybe go for that just instead. And no, you don't have to do this the entire time, but you can try applying, um, that tip to make some of your mixed drinks. Me personally, I really love the vitamin zero lemonade flavored one, so I'll probably just drink that along with a little bit of vodka, maybe a lemon slice and some ice, throw some strawberries in there. It'll be delicious and it will spare me, like I said, a little bit of calories for a meal that I'll have later in the day when me and my group are back at the campsite barbecuing. Okay, I had I had a really good article I wanted to, to talk to you guys about, um, about how vitamin zero water is not necessarily that terrible of an option um, because they don't use... Um, artificial sweeteners like a lot of those zero calorie drinks do but I can't find the article right now but feel free to check it out yourself do your own research but that is the first tip I have for you guys the second tip and this probably goes without saying is have fruit cut up ready to go um, might seem like an obvious one you've probably heard that around before but it's going to be a lot nicer for you in a long run if you already have a couple maybe big bins of watermelon cut up or pineapple cut up. I would save the apples and stuff so they don't brown unless you want to squeeze a little bit of lemon on them. But definitely have some fruit ready to go as a quick snack because you can totally indulge in fruit and vegetables and it's all good, right? Nothing that'll ever happen. I'm totally kidding. But that is another thing that you can do is just have some of your healthy foods ready to go. For me personally, I'm going to be pre-making some 
mango salsa and some guacamole so I can know exactly what's going inside of it and make the exact amount that I want for me and my friends to share. Okay, third tip. So this one is a tip that a lot of people such as UFC fighters or models before a photo shoot may use in order to lean out or get ready for their way in. Um, so sometimes what they will do is five days or seven days or you can extend it, change it however you want, they will drink around two gallons of water and it is an incredible amount of water to drink. I've tried drinking gallons of waters, a gallon of water a day for a long period of time and it's definitely very hard to do but just hear me out on this. So let's just stick with the example that I have on my phone. Five days prior to your event or weigh-in or whatever, you're going to be drinking two gallons of water a day. The next day, you're going to be drinking one gallon of water a day. The day after, two liters of water. The day after that, one liter. And then when it's time for weigh-in, you're going to be drinking water occasionally or as you need it rather than trying to get as much water into your system as you possibly can because it will cause your stomach to expand a little bit. Um, and I don't want you to go without drinking water in a day. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying you want to re or overly hydrate your body because you are going to be getting a little bit less water as the days progress. And this could be for a one day, a one day event, two days, whatever. But do make sure that if it's more than a one day event that you're getting enough water that day, but you don't need to be drinking a gallon or two gallons a day. Um, once again, I want to say this, do what feels right to your body. If you want to drink that much water anyways, then do it. If it totally makes you feel great and you want to be healthy and just getting as much water as you can, definitely do that. Listen to your body. But this is just another tip that I have. None of this is meant to spark up any controversy, but yes, lots of water increasingly having less and less water um, to slim down prior to your event. Next, instead of using burger buns, you can get some charred leaves, the big ones, or you can get some butter lettuce heads and just stack up like four or five slices of lettuce heads and put your burger, hot dog, whatever inside of that. And don't think that it's gonna be boring. Yes, indulge in bread if you wanna indulge in bread, but if you are trying to save some of those carbs, then you can swap it out for lettuce. And you can stack up the lettuce as high as you want on either side, fill it with, some tomatoes, cucumbers, avocado. One thing that I've really been into lately with um, veggie burgers that I've been eating is um, putting on a layer of hummus and then a layer of ketchup. I know it sounds weird, but hummus and ketchup together are absolutely amazing, I think. Okay, so just try and swap out some of your bread carbs for that. Next tip, flat seed crackers, homemade or store-bought. If you are trying to have lower carbs, this is a great alternative. You can get the flackers off of Thrive Market or maybe your local Whole Foods, Oliver's, whatever health food store you have around. But one thing I do really like to do is make them. They do take a couple of hours to make. If you are using an oven or a dehydrator, they'll take even longer to make. But there are plenty of YouTube videos on how to make flaxseed crackers or multi-seed crackers that are relatively low in carbs or no net carbs at all. I made some a couple of weeks ago and I just mixed, I think it was the equivalent of two cups worth of nuts, whatever kind of nuts you want. You put some psyllium husk in there which acts as a binding agent, some hot water, um, spices, it forms a paste, and then you put it on a parchment sheet of paper or a cookie tray or whatever, and you bake it for a certain amount of time. Look it up. It's actually a great alternative, and my crackers turned out pretty soft when I did it because I didn't cook them for long enough, I suppose, and they were incredibly delicious and nutty and flavorful, and so I'm going to make the same ones this time. Cook some of them longer so they get crispy so I can dip them in hummus, guacamole, whatever, and then cut some in larger slices. Don't cook those ones as much and use those as my bread alternative because they really were soft and they pulled apart and they were so delicious. So I'm gonna be making some as bread and some as my crackers. Let me make sure that my camera's not dying. We're good but it, it, it's about to die, so I hope it doesn't die on you guys. I'll try and make this quick. Um, 
Actually, I only have one more tip left. Well, two. So, I love apples. And I guess you could do this for any fruit, but apples mainly, I think, or mangoes. I like to cut my apples in smaller slices instead of really thick slices. The reason for that being, somehow it tricks my brain into thinking that I'm eating more apple. Even though, like, if I only want half of an apple, I will cut that apple into very thin slices, and I have more apple, per se. So, possibly try doing that, cutting your fruit into smaller slices, um, and it might make you think that you're eating more food when you are not. Uh, another quick tip that, I, tip that I have before my camera dies is, and this is something my friend told me, when you are eating a big meal, cut everything on your plate in half. Push one to one side, one to the other side. Eat the half, that first half first. And this goes back to um, so along the lines of intuitive eating and learning when you're actually full, which is a, what a lot of people struggle with. So eat that first half. Wait 10 minutes. Decide if you are really hungry for that second serving. If you are, yes, please eat. But if you are not, stick with that one half for now. Save that other half for maybe later in the night. Maybe you've had a few drinks and you want to come back and eat. That is fine. That is perfectly fine. But you will have the second half of your dinner rather than having to go back for a full another meal or snack because you know we all get that drudgy sometimes. So it's like... <laughs> um. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, another tip. Um, if you know you're going to be drinking, try getting an alcohol that's, uh, that doesn't have any fruit or added sugar to it in that sense, like a flavored vodka or whatever it is you may be getting. Try getting a plain vodka or tequila or something white. Um, yes, it is still very calorie dense, but you're not getting added sugars, added carbs, etc., etc. So that's just another tip to save you some carbs. Um, potentially some calories depending on what alcohol you get or you could just go with a wine or champagne those can be very sweet and fruity too as well but just some little tips one last tip that I have for you guys today let me make sure that my battery's not dying I have to turn my phone to like the facing me camera okay we're good um, one of the last tips that I have for you guys is to make some of your snacks homemade oh I cut myself homemade and in abundance. So I just bought some low carb tortillas and I'm gonna be making some of my own tortilla chips. I will probably get some tortilla chips along with it, but it'll make me feel better knowing that I have some tortilla chips that I'm gonna be making without any oil and with um, other spices to flavor them. Um, like I said, I'm making my own salsa. I'm also gonna be making my own granola. Not only will it be drastically cheaper, but I'm not gonna use honey, maple syrup, brown sugar. I'm gonna make it with ingredients that I want, um, sweeteners that I feel necessary, some nuts, some seeds. Um, yes, these things do take time, but if you are planning a trip, plan a day or a half a day or a couple hours um, and some foods you want to make in abundance and just spend some time cooking those and have them ready to go. The last thing I'm going to say, you can get, once again, these are low carb. I'm grabbing them. Oh, here's the flackers, by the way, the ones I got from Thrive Market, but you can look at your local grocery store to get whatever ones that you want. So I can't find my... Um, it's like a cracker pizza crust that has spirulina in it and is gluten-free as well. Um, I, I can eat gluten just fine, but they're just ones that I found that I really wanted to try. If you want some kind of wrap, you can get coconut wraps. These ones are paleo. I found them at um, oh, I found them at Oliver's Market, and they actually are so delicious. I'm not even... Oh, these ones are low-key molding. Here, I'll show you the top of it. They're coconut wraps, they work as tortillas, but look at how nasty that is. I try to not eat these too much, so I've only had two of them, and I bought these like, oh, probably like two weeks ago, and I guess they've already gone bad, so if you're going to get these, share them with your friends, share them with your family, unless you are a very big fan of wraps. You can also use these for your hamburgers, or um, tacos, whatever it is you're making on your trip. Um, they are made of coconut. They're actually really good. They're savory. And personally, I like them in some circumstances better than actual tortillas. So this is always an option. Um, and it's really not a bad thing that they went bad so quickly because their ingredients are so natural and they don't have artificial preservatives to keep them good for longer. Like you'll notice how if you buy certain breads from Trader Joe's, they go bad very quickly. 
Whereas if you buy certain breads from Safeway um, that have all these preservatives, they will stay good for a long time. So definitely more of a natural option for you guys. And I may have had a couple other ones, but my camera's about to die. And so I'm going to wrap that up right now. I'm going to try getting this video uploaded as soon as I possibly can, but I've been having trouble making enough room on my laptop to do so. So I have quite a few videos recorded, but none of them uploaded yet. But I'm very much hoping to get the ball rolling because um, I love to talk. So if you have any other great ideas um, to kind of stay on track with your diet while you're going out to eat, oh, then please put